The seducer is a simple yet versatile and productive pattern that catches a variety of fish in both fresh and salt water. It lands softly, sinks slowly, and moves in the water like it's alive. Commercial snook fisherman Homer Rhodes is credited with creating the fly, originally the Homer Rhodes streamer, in the 1940s. A popular fishing writer combined the words see and seduce to give the fly the more original name, seducer, in the 1980s. If you're interested in tying this fly, a recipe, along with a link to our website where you can buy all the materials, is in the description. Choosing the right materials is really the key to tying this fly well. If you haven't tied in matched feathers or pomered feathers before, you might want to go back and watch our basic videos on those topics. Feathers have a top and a bottom. The top, which is usually glossier, is the side that would be on the outside of the bird. The barbs, the small filaments of the feather extending off of the quill, bend away from the top of the feather, cupping towards the back. Longer feathers also often have a sideways curve to them. The curve of the feathers from one side of the bird will be a mirror image of the feathers from the other side of the bird. The tail is made of two pairs of saddle feathers matched together. The length and shape of the feathers chosen for the tail of the fly must be similar, and the curve of the feathers from one side should be the opposite of the curve of the feathers for the other side. Feathers typically either come removed from the hide and strung together, or still attached to the hide. If you are using a full saddle, just pull a couple feathers from the same place on both sides of the skin. The curves, shapes, and sizes will naturally match. The selection process is a little more difficult if you are using strung feathers. You will have to spread the feathers out and look for feathers with similar shapes, lengths, and curves. They should be strung together so that the feathers on one end curve in one direction, and the feathers on the other end curve the other direction. Once you've got your feathers, you'll need to prepare them for tying in. Take the feathers you plan to tie in on the close side and match them up, starting with the tips. The curves should match so that they lay right against each other. From this point, you'll be treating these two feathers as one. The feathers should be tied in with around two and a half hook lengths extending past the tie-in point. The tops of the feathers, which would be the outside of the bird, should be facing out, and if the feathers have a sideways curve, the tips should naturally curve down. Hold the feathers together tightly with your materials hand, just in front of the tie-in point. Use your thread hand to stroke the barbs away from the feather tip, exposing the quills right at the tie-in point. Trim both feathers together, leaving around a quarter inch past the tie-in point. Either strip off the barbs past the tie-in point, or cut them off. I prefer to cut them, leaving a little bit of stubble behind, which will help lock the feathers in place when you tie them in. Use the pinch to tie the first pair of feathers in on top of the hook shank. Rotating them slightly towards you will help offset their tendency to roll away when you tighten the thread. Pinch the feathers tightly against the hook shank as you wrap them in to minimize any movement. The two feathers should now be oriented vertically in the same plane as the hook and should appear as one feather. Match up the second pair of feathers and measure them against the pair you've already tied in. Then prepare them the same way. Place this pair on the other side of the feathers you've already tied in, with the tips even. The insides of the two pairs of feathers should be against each other. Place the trim butt ends on top of the hook and tie them down using the pinch, just like the first set. If the feathers aren't lined up just right at first, pinch them together near the tie-in point and wrap back towards the back of the hook, wrapping several times over both pairs. Once both pairs of feathers are tied in, spend a little time working them together, making sure they are matched up correctly. The four feathers should appear as one matched tail extending off the back end of the hook. Tie a half hitch to secure your progress. Now add some flashaboo to each side of the fly. Take two or three strands, fold them evenly around the thread, slide them into place on the close side of the fly, and add a couple locking wraps. Trim so the flash extends right to or a little beyond the feather tail. Repeat the process on the other side of the fly then tie a half hitch. The body of the seducer will be created by palmering two white saddle feathers and one red feather up the hook shank. First, choose two white saddle feathers with flexible stems and relatively long barbs. Prepare them the same way you did the tail feathers, choosing a tie-in point, pulling back the barbs, and removing the stiffer portion of the quill. 
I like to cut far enough down that some of the downy barbs are left on the feather. Place the two white feathers together with the feathers oriented the same way. Push the butt ends of the feathers against the close side of the hook shank, just in front of the tail, with the tips of the feathers extending back over the tail. Bring your thread around the hook shank, trapping the feathers as you go, and add some locking wraps. The feathers should be oriented with the glossier side, which would be in the outside of the bird, facing the front when the feather is tied in. This way the barbs will naturally curve towards the back of the fly once the feathers are wrapped. Advance the thread up the hook about two-thirds of the way to the eye, wrapping the loose ends down as you go. Secure the thread with a half hitch. Bring the bobbin cradle around if you're tying with a rotary vise, and hang the thread over it. If you have hackle pliers, clamp them to the end of the feather closest to the eye of the hook. Avoid the very tip, which may be too weak to take the tension. Wrap the feather up the hook shank in close, even wraps. Wiggling the feather back and forth helps to avoid trapping barbs under the feather stem. If you're using a feather with flexible barbs, like the saddle I'm pommering with here, you may need to stroke the barbs back and out of the way to keep from trapping them under the next wrap. When you reach the thread, move the bobbin cradle out of the way if you've been using one. While maintaining tension on the feather to keep it from unwrapping, use your materials hand to drop the bobbin over the hook shank and around the feather stem, trapping the feather. Two or three wraps will hold it in place. Then you can let the end of the feather go. Tie a half pitch to secure your progress. Repeat the process with a second white feather, wrapping it through the first feather. Go slowly, filling any gaps and trying not to trap barbs as you move forward. Tie the front of this feather off even with the last one. Then trim the butt ends off and lash them down. Next, choose a single red feather with barbs as long as, or a little shorter than, the white feathers. This time, cut the feather short enough to remove all the downy barbs nearest the butt end. Tie the feather in by the butt end directly in front of the white feathers, with the top of the feather in front. Bring your thread to just behind the eye of the hook and tie a half hitch. Palmer the feather up to the eye, filling the space with close, even wraps. When you get to the front, lock the feather in place just like before, using your materials hand to bring the bobbin around and over. I like to form part of the thread head before trimming the end of the feather off. This holds the stem back over itself, locking the feather in securely without cratting the eye of the hook. Use the triangle to pull the barbs back and out of the way as you wrap. I usually wrap a little way back over the front feather barbs to give the head a more conical shape. Using the tips of a sharp pair of scissors, carefully trim the extra feather off. Then finish up the thread head. And tie a whip finish. I like to tie two four or five turn whip finishes to make sure the fly is as durable as possible. Trim the thread, then finish with head cement. Tied in a variety of sizes and colors, the seducer is a very effective pattern that will catch fish all over the world. Seducers are often tied with weed guards for use around structure and over vegetation. You can easily modify the pattern by changing the proportions or adding lead or bead chain eyes. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe.